Blood, good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another video. And before I actually start talking to you guys about a for loop, which is pretty much what I wanted to teach in this video, I want to mention one thing, and you guys probably already noticed. I included three other files the C type, string, and math.h. And I actually don't even need them in this video because I'm just talking about loop and they aren't um, included in any of these. But the reason that I include them right now is because in the future videos, probably like the next dozen or so, I'm going to be showing you guys some really cool functions that are built into C and they're actually included in these files right here. So since I'm going to be kind of concentrating in this area right now where we're going to be doing the majority of the programming, I just uh, I want to tell you guys to include them right now because then later on when we need them or I teach them, they're going to be there. So I didn't want to forget them, but I had to mention it. So now on to the good stuff, this video, for loops. So what the heck is a for loop and a why the heck do we even need another loop? Well, a for loop is really good when you know exactly how many times you want to loop. And you know, whenever we were like working with a while loop, it pretty much looped until something happened or until we told it to break. But for loops give you a lot of control over exactly how many times you want to loop, which are good if you know that in the future. So I'll show you guys the syntax for it, and later on, whenever we're making programs, you'll see why sometimes you need for loops and sometimes they're a lot better than either while or, or uh, do while loops. So right now, let's just go ahead and I'll show you the syntax. So make any variable, an integer variable named bacon, and then a couple lines down, type the word for. Now the basic uh, structure for it is basically the same as a while loop. You just use the word for or the keyword for instead of while. However, inside the parentheses, it's going to take three different pieces of information and they're called expressions. Now, the thing you have to do is unlike just a normal function or something where everything is separated with the comma, these actually get separated with a semicolon because they are indeed expressions. Now the very first expression, you pretty much have to say, where do you want to begin your loop? So I'm just going to go ahead and begin at the number one. So that's why I'm going to put bacon equals one. Now the next expression is pretty much going to say, okay, well, when do you want to end? Well, let's just go ahead and print out 10 numbers. So I'll say bacon is less than or equal to 10. So of course the first two, um, pieces of the puzzle are easy. Pretty much where you want to start and where you want to end. So the last piece is actually saying, how much do you want to increment by? So if we increment by one, then it's going to print out 10 times. If we increment by two, it's going to print out five times. And I'll show you guys a sample of this later if, if uh, you're better visually understanding. But I want to increment by one, so I'm going to put bacon plus plus. So now, basically what this is saying is begin at one, stop at 10, and go up by one. So then this loop is gonna loop 10 times, whatever code we put in here, that's what's gonna happen. So printf, and in here, I'm just gonna print something out on the screen, and I'll put bacon is, and I'll write the number of the loop iteration that we're on. So percent %d, and then I'll push it on a new line. I'll just print out bacon so you guys can see what's going on. So let me run this and check it out. So pretty much as I stated before, it starts at one, it ends at 10, and because we have bacon plus plus, which means add one to bacon every time, that's why it goes in steps of one at a time. Now, we're not just limited to steps of one at a time or two at a time, we can do something like step up by eight at a time. So let me do that. Let's go ahead and begin at zero and go all the way to a hundred and say that we wanted to step up by eight. Well, in order to do that, just put bacon plus equals eight. So basically this is saying start at zero, go up to hundred, like I just said, and go in steps of eight. So now when you run this, check it out. It says zero, eight, 16, and it keeps adding eight until this condition is met right here. Bacon is less than or equal to 100. So the next one after this would be 104, so that's why it didn't print out. 
So again, I know this was a real quick tutorial, and you guys are probably still wondering, okay, well, I could have done all of this with a while loop, so why the heck would I even use this? But later on, you're going to see why sometimes for loops are incredibly powerful and why they are incredibly also beneficial in the future of programs. So thank you guys for watching, and well, I'll see you next time.